Hi, it's Benny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class. But this is a card class with a twist because I'll actually be doing some painting on some wood slices. So to begin, I'm going to be using the Arteza acrylic paints. And I'm just giving you a look at these beautiful paints that the kind folks there sent me. And I will have links to all of the Penny Black products and Arteza products that I'm using today down in the YouTube description box below, along with a coupon code from Arteza for all of you Penny Black fans. So this is the wonderful set of 60. There are every color you could ever want or need to do some painting. Great size um, of tubes. So there's plenty there to do lots of projects, but not so many that it is overwhelming or difficult to store. They also sent me the medium wood slices and I'll give you a look at these now. These are so fun. I think they are great for home decor or gifts, or you could even put them on as like a gift tag on a neat, um, like a gift bag. Also, they think they would be wonderful for Christmas ornaments. So I have some left over and I'm anxious to do some Christmas stamping on them too. So here's a look at the projects that we will be doing today. The three wood slices that I will be painting. Now these techniques can also be used with cards, I would just recommend using a heavyweight cardstock if you're going to use acrylics with it. And you could even use a colored cardstock because acrylics are going to be an opaque medium. Now I will have a full supply list of all of the stamps and all of the paints and all of the colors, all the products that I'm using today at the end of the video up on screen. So if you want to see that in more detail, just go ahead and hit pause at that time and you can check it out. So to begin, I decided to paint my backgrounds. I'm using a water brush from Arteza, but this does not have any water. I'm not using any water with it. <clears throat> and I'm using a mix here of some oranges and reds, going for the effect of a little bit darker color around the outer edges and lighter towards the middle. And I chose this brush just because it is a really nice wide brush and it makes covering the area of the wood slice very easy. And I'm just rinsing that off here. I'm going to put a little bit more color in the center. And I'm just going to blend that out and set it aside to dry. Now for my next wood slice, I decided to go with some blues. So I'm just going to paint that on here. Now these were actually inspired by some cards that I had made previously. So the color choices and sort of the layout and design were inspired by those. And I'm going to show you those at the very end of the video. So if you're also looking for card ideas, they are coming too. But I have to say, I usually just make cards, but this was a really fun project for me. And sometimes I think it feels really good to step outside of the box of what we normally create. So if you're feeling like you're in a little bit of a funk or you're, you know, your mojo isn't very good for your cards, your card making, try something different. This is a really fun type of project to do. I also think it would be fun that, um, that you could do like with a get together, a crafty get together, just for something different um, to paint and do. So I added some greens in here with my blues, kind of going for a turquoise effect and just blending them together. I think I was losing some of my blue, so I went back and mixed it in. And that's one of the benefits, I think, of acrylic paints that is really fun is that you can keep adding layers and they are opaque. So if you go, you know, too much green, put more blue on top of it. And you can very easily correct um, anything that didn't turn out the way you originally planned. You can see here that these colors are really bold, very vibrant, and just beautiful. I cannot get enough of this sort of magenta color. And here I'm just going to add some darker color around the edges. And just going for that same sort of style of lighter in the middle and darker around the edges on all of them just changing the colors and where those two colors meet just sort of blending that and doing the paintbrush around. Now I'm going to stamp this using Penny Black's Petal Profiles and this is a really lovely solid stamp set so there's lots of fun techniques you can do with this 
and I found I could stamp this in my MISTI stamp positioning tool. Now it's not going to be perfect stamping because you're stamping, of course, we're stamping onto a wood slice. I put some double-sided tape underneath that to hold it still, but it is just enough. I took out the um, cushion and it is just enough so I can get a couple of impressions. Now I'm stamping this with Onyx black ink. I wanted a waterproof ink and one that was pretty juicy to stamp onto the wood. And I'm not going for perfect stamping at all. I'm going to paint over the top of this with the opaque acrylic paints, but I just want enough there so that I can paint it. I am not um, someone that can illustrate or draw my own designs, which is why I love stamping. I can still do the painting and coloring that is so fun for me, but I don't have to worry about the illustration. So using this petal profile set, I'm just kind of creating my own bouquet, so to speak. And then I'm also going to pull in a little bit of stamping from our Secret Garden transparent set. And these two really work well together. Like I said, here I'm doing them on wood slices, but they would look beautiful on cards as well. There's lots of different ways to arrange these. Now I'm inking this and just wiping a little bit off the stem because I didn't want all of that to stamp. And again, you don't have to worry about perfect stamping. You don't have to worry about if you get a smudge because you're using acrylic paints and so you can just paint right over the top and hide any uh, mistakes that you might make. And then we'll just stamp this down. And I've got that first layer stamped. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint this in and I'm so sorry for my head. I've, I, you know, every time I make a video, I think, don't lean forward and get your head in the, <laughs> in the camera. And I always manage to do that. So thank you to everyone who's patient with me on that. Now what I'm doing here is I wanted this flower to actually be white. So you can see I can paint right over the top of that black stamping with the opaque acrylic paint and have a beautiful white daisy with that bold background behind it. And if a little bit of the black shows, I think it just creates sort of a shadow effect. So it, again, does not have to be perfect by any means. Just touching up here on some details. You'll see again that I'm using an Arteza water, um, water brush, but there's no, I'm not using any water with that. I just like these brushes. Um, even with the acrylic paints. And putting a few layers on here just to increase the opacity and also to give that just a little bit more texture as well. I'm gonna rinse off my brush and then move on to another color. Now this was my first time painting on these wood slices. So when I went to put this green over that dark, or sorry, this yellow over that dark background, I saw that some of that was kind of showing through. So what I found and what I did in the future is I first put a layer of white down in most cases and then put my color on top. And I love the way that turned out. It added some life and natural highlighting to the other areas that I was painting. And it also required me then to put less layers of paint as I went. So you can see there where I thought, oh, maybe I should put some white here <laughs> and I put some white paint in and then I'll go over that with the yellows. And I really liked how that started blending together and just looking solid and opaque and like it was part of the rest of the flower. Now, while that's still wet, I'm just feathering in some of the darker colors. I'm using the detail brushes from Arteza to do this. And again, like a feathering sweeping motion with my brush. And here you can see where for these details now I'm learned and I'm adding some white first. And then even while it's still wet, I'm just putting on some of the green paints and I like how they mix together. I had a little too much um, water on my brush from washing it. So I'm just kind of mixing things up here, trying some new things. I wanted to have some yellow in that leaf and then go back and blend in some green into the yellow and sort of while they're on the actual wood slice they're blending together and creating this nice olive bright color. Here's where I'll fix up that other leaf, put the white back on and blend in some of that green and like I said the exact colors will be listed at the end of the video up on screen.
and while that's drying and just kind of playing around here like I said this is my first time really doing this technique trying these mediums out and so there's a lot of experimentation and I thought I'm just going to capture that on video for everyone and um, encourage you to not be afraid to try something that you haven't used before to do something that you haven't done before even I was really happy with how these turned out but even if what you create doesn't turn out perfectly or how you had imagined it I think it just can stretch you and stretch your creativity and um, get you inspired to go back to maybe a medium you used before or to try a part of what you did on your next project so I'm just continuing here on these flowers decided to add in some pink here so for this one I'm going to paint over it with the white and add the pink you can see that this stamp set is perfect for this whether you're doing it on a card or a wood slice you've got nice detail to those flowers but they're not so detailed that it's difficult to paint over the top and while that's still wet I'm just going to feather in this magenta color and you can see how because I'm putting that onto the wet white paint they mix together it lightens up it gives some areas of light and some dark some of the white along the edges is still showing through and they just blend together really nicely I'm even grabbing a little bit of reds and orange oranges here to mix into this flower and acrylic paint is kind of a flat medium so I found that by layering the white and multiple colors on top it really helped everything come to life and have more interest visually and then here again I'm not worried about getting perfect coverage or getting the details exactly as they are stamped just covering them up here giving a nice hand painted look and I'm gonna go ahead and mix in here and add my other colors on top just tying in some of that orange and yellow that is in the pink flower and the center of the white flower moving those colors throughout the entire piece and then I'm adding a touch of that pink in there again mixing colors and adding more than one color really adds some life to the entire design especially when working with a sort of a somewhat flat type medium like acrylics at least for me it's different than like a watercolor where you get a really get a loose range of light to dark just with one stroke of the brush and I love to play and probably over fiddle around <laughs> with things but I'm just continuing to do that here up on this flower and this one too as well now this is a really bright green and wow I really loved once I added that to those leaves I just thought oh, that's what they needed they needed that extra pop um, of freshness so you've got that range of light and dark that's not a color I would typically probably reach for in a marker but I loved it here with the acrylics and I'm even pulling some of the yellow here on top and again fun for me with acrylics because they're opaque you can go back with a lighter color on top of a darker color and continue to work with your image and add the shading it's kind of inspired with that green and I went in here now with some neon pink and just added a little touch of that there to the flower so I felt like after I painted this that I wanted that center blue portion to be a little bit lighter so that these images would pop a little bit more so I just went back and mixed some of the blue paint with some white paint and I'm just painting that carefully as I can around the flower and I'm much happier with that once I added that brightened up that blue I felt like everything just started to pop off uh, pop off that wood slice and just have more life and energy to it 
and I'll be doing a little bit more of that later in the video using some gouache paint as well and that actually was easier to do than going in with this acrylic paint but you can see how just brightening that up really added a lot I think to the entire thing now here I'm mixing it in with some green just to kind of smooth out the transition as it moved towards the outer edge of the wood slice I know this video gets a little bit long. I hope I'm not boring you too much, but I felt like since this was something new that I don't typically do, I would leave in a lot of the details so you could sort of go along the process with me as I was learning and trying out something new myself. So I finished up that and then I set that aside to dry and decide um, as I worked what I would do with it next. So for the next wood slice I used our petal profile stamp again along with um, the leaf stamp from the exquisite envelope stamp set. And I went ahead stamped those in black just like I had done before, painted the multiple layers on and here I'm just showing you just a little touch of painting that I'm adding, just layering on that color onto that flower. You can see I added lots of variation with the leaves and this is a mix of the stamping of the flower is like a solid silhouette stamp, but the leaves are a line image stamp. And you can use a line image stamp too and just paint right over the lines, which I've done here on those leaves. And I'll show you that on the last wood slice we're working on where the flower is an outline image for that one. So I'm just working in adding a variety of different colors and oranges here onto this flower. I feel like the more layers, the more movement that that provides to the flower and the entire image. I'm going to paint right over the center here and then I will go back um, once that's dry and add some white dots to the center. And here is that super bright yellowish green, adding a touch of that to these leaves, just a really small touch to liven them up a bit. Next, as I mentioned before, I am going to stamp the outline flower from the In My Garden stamp set. And you can use this with the acrylic paints as well. So you can see I painted just a few of those petals in white and then I'm adding my color right on top. I've already done like the leaves down below and then I'm just blending that in. And part of the outline shows and part of it doesn't. You don't have to worry too much. I just didn't want to um, too much of the outline to be showing but I wasn't worried about if a little bit here and there showed. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe just by looking at it it'll make a little more sense. I'm adding my shading, putting my darker color in while that other light color is still a little bit wet so I can blend them together with kind of a feathering stroke with my paintbrush. Trying to remember to leave some touches of white here and there as I think that just keeps a lot of life and highlight to the image. And that uh, magenta color and a touch of red make a really nice light and dark combination. And I'll work using the same techniques here on this petal. Trying to remember to add and keep some of that white in there. Now this I have already painted white and I'm just adding the blue on top again leaving some of that white around the edge just for some added definition and life to the image. I think it gives it more dimension too. So 
So now I've grabbed my gouache paints. These are also from Arteza and they are for me like a mix between watercolor and um, acrylic paint. So the more water you add the more they're going to be like a watercolor and the less water or no water the more they're going to be like a sort of a th thin acrylic. I've added quite a bit of water here and I'm just painting this onto the background. I'm even letting it kind of puddle up and give it sort of a cloudy look. So just like on that first one that I painted I felt like I think these need to have some brightness and uh, just a little more happiness towards the center. So on this one I'm bringing in that yellow gouache paint to just really liven things up and I was much happier with everything once I did that. So I'm just mixing in water with the gouache paint and then painting it onto the background. And then as it blends out into the other or the edge I just use more water to blend it out and less of the gouache paint and I went back and actually did that on this one as well because I liked the uh, sort of cloudy look that it gave it putting the um, sort of less watered down paint towards the center and then blending it out then I also pulled just a little bit of that gouache paint to play around with darkening up the edges a little bit. So I liked layering these two acrylic and gouache paint mediums together. And now I'm going to add some splatters. So this again, you could water down the acrylic paints or I'm using the gouache paint to add some white splatters. I think again that adds just some more life to that background and to the entire piece. I think these would also be very beautiful if you did them in very neutral colors for your painting even left some of the wood grain showing and I think they might make really nice home decor pieces with sort of a farmhouse style to them, very rustic. Here I'm just picking up some white acrylic paint and just swiping a touch of that around the outer edges, just a little bit here and there. I think that gives some movement to the background. For this one I just glued a creative die that was cut from white cardstock. On. I felt like it had open space up there that needed to be covered and I'm keeping these in my craft area so the create word was perfect for that. So here's a look at the finished wood slices. Got some close up here so you can see the texture and just all the fun painting that these um, were for me to do. I highly encourage you to give this a try even if it's not something you typically do. But if you love these stamps and you love that idea of painting um, sort of an opaque, with an opaque paint, here are the cards that inspired these wood slices. Now these were stamped with gray ink onto colored cardstock and then painted with the gouache paints straight out of the tube. So they were very opaque. I then added just a touch of ink blending to the backgrounds over the white heat embossed sentiments so that solid opaque painting can work beautifully for things like the wood slices but also for card making too for a totally different look. I thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope you made it to the end of this long episode. <laughs> if you did enjoy today's video please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to ring the bell so you're notified of any new uploads and you can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter as well as our website and blog and I have linked everything for you down in the YouTube description box below. Happy stamping!